So let's see if we can apply some of these ideas about if statements and use them on the micro bit. So I'm on board to code week three and I'm about halfway down the page. I'm gonna have a little go at making the micro bit work as a torch. Uh, what I want, I think, is to be able to push button A, that'll turn the LEDs on, and button B, and that'll turn the LEDs off. So think about how we express that in terms of code. I've got some pseudo code here that's gonna walk me through it. So just like always, I'm gonna use a while true loop. So that starts here, there's my while block, as we say, it starts here and stops here. And what I wanna do is to repeatedly run through the instructions inside that while loop and do it forever and ever and ever and ever. Uh, what I'm gonna say then is that while we're doing this loop, I'm gonna check if button A has been pushed. And, and the, so this is my if block. Remember we talked about this before, that's the if block, the set of instructions there. So anyway, uh, if button A is pushed, turn the LEDs on. Uh, if that's not the case, but if button B has been pushed, I'd like to turn all the LEDs off. And uh, otherwise, what else? Don't do anything, and then once we've done that, we'll zip back up to the top. Common question is, um, is this while bit here very important? What if I didn't write while true and end while? What if I just started here and wrote down to the bottom? Well, you've got to remember that the computer runs thousands of instructions every single second. And so if I didn't have this while loop, what would happen is I'd plug my micro bit into the computer, and I turn it on, and what would happen is the moment I plugged it in and it started running my code, it would say, right, are they pushing the button? Uh, no, because they only plugged it in about a thousandth of a second ago. They probably haven't taken their fingers off the USB cable since they plugged it into the PC to power it up. Okay, well, I don't care about that. Have they pushed button A? No, okay. Do they push button B? No, okay. Um, well, in that case, uh, don't do anything. And that's the end of the program. So now stop, don't do anything else ever. That's all my instructions. I'll never do anything ever again. And so if you had a program like this, the only way you could ever, ever make this actually do anything would be to hold down button A or button B as you plug the micro bit in so that when it whipped through once to see if the buttons were pushed, one of the buttons would be, and it would work. Do you see? So by having the loop instead, you're checking thousands and thousands of times a second to see if something's happened. It kind of reminds me a bit of um, when you get children on a long car journey and they're sort of saying, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? And it's the same idea as that that's happening on this. Anyway, back to, uh, back to what we're gonna try and do, which is to make this torch. So this is my pseudo code. What does that look like in actual uh, micro Python? Well, it looks a bit like this. I'm gonna grab these lines of code. Let's pick those up. And I'm gonna right click and copy. Or you could use the keyboard shortcut, Control and C. I'm then loading up Mu, which is the text editor that we use, or the IDE that we use for micro Python. It looks a bit like this. Mu, you should have an icon for that on your desktop. And what I'm doing is I'm gonna then paste that code into place just here. Let's just have a little look, see if we recognize it from the pseudo code. So it's while true, that's our while block. And you can see that the things that are involved in that while loop, they're indented, aren't they, down here? Look, these are these instructions. And you'll hopefully recognize uh, the idea of if just here. This is the code we use to say that if the A button's been pressed, so that's uh, hopefully, it should make sense as you look at it visually, I think. Don't forget to put a colon on the end. I'm then saying that I'd like to use the display to show what we call a chessboard image, which is every other LED being turned on. It's not perfect, but I found out a pretty good match for what we're trying to achieve. Uh, and then we've got the idea of saying, well, uh, if that's not the case, but if button B has been pushed, we're gonna turn all the LEDs off. We're gonna clear the display. Uh, and in the original code, in my pseudo code, I also had another line, didn't I, which was to say else. But what did I actually want to do if it was else? It was to do nothing, wasn't it? And there isn't really a command for do nothing. You don't have to ask the computer to do nothing. So I don't actually need these lines of code. So that's why they don't appear there. So that's my code. So what you can do once that's all in is you can click on flash. And what that'll do is that will push the code for that to your micro bit. Mine's being done right now. And after a few seconds, you'll get the message to say it's on. There it is and I click on OK, and you can then push button A, I'm doing it right now, that works for me, and then button B, and it turns it off again. So we've got this idea of using an if statement to do that. So that's quite simple, but can we make something a little bit more advanced? Can we use some variables to make this more useful? Well, the idea I had was to make something to help people like toddlers 
uh, learn their numbers to help them recognize numbers visually and the micro bit display is perfect for doing that so we had this idea where I said well maybe use a variable for the current number to display on the micro bit we'll store that in a variable and we'll start at zero and we'll just do that once because otherwise the number will always always be zero and we'll then say that uh, we'll have a, a while true loop which we've seen before a few times here's a while block just here with while loop and what I'm going to do repeatedly is I'm going to say that if the user pushes button A that's going to be my counting down because it's on the left of the micro bit if they push button A decrease the current number by one and then print the current number onto the screen good idea uh, otherwise if button B gets pushed increase the current number by one and show the current number on the screen and that's everything I want in my if block so that seems that seems pretty fair, doesn't it? So let's have a look at how we would do that in MicroPython. And I've only got some more code here. So I'm just going to pick that up straight away. And I'm going to copy that, Control and C, into the code window. So I'll delete all that out of there. And then paste my new code in. And before we just run it and flash it up, let's take a look. So uh, that's that variable being set. Don't forget, you always, always need this from micro bit line on the top. Otherwise, you won't be able to talk to the buttons on your micro bit. I've then got a while loop. Hopefully, some of these elements, as you see them again and again, just being used in different ways, start to feel a bit more familiar, a bit more intuitive, perhaps. And what we've said then is that if we push the first button, current number minus equals one. So what that means is that we want the variable current number to be worth one less than it currently is. Okay, and that's the standard syntax. It doesn't have to be one. I could make it jump down five at a time if I wanted. Not very useful for a counting application, but uh, but just by one. Uh, and then I'm going to use the display dot scroll. That means to roll the number across the display, uh, the current number. Okay, and the current number, if I'd just done that, would be actually uh, zero, take away one, it'd actually be minus one, wouldn't it? So I could do that. There's my else if that we talked about before, that's adding one to it. Again, I could, I could easily have that as add 100 instead if I wanted. Not very helpful for this, but I could do it. And then to show the current number. Uh, I didn't have to start at the number zero. I could have started at the number minus five if I wanted. Or I could start at the number three or wherever I want instead, but I started at zero. So that's my program, and I can flash that and push that up to the micro bit. If you don't want it to scroll, I think actually you can use dot show instead. I'm pretty sure you can use dot show in here, but I'm pretty sure for what we're doing, dot scroll is probably going to work better. My, my gut tells me. I've got my micro bit here. I'm just doing it now. I've just pushed my button, uh, and that's come up, and that's just showing me a two, a three, and a four. I'm counting down again now. Three. Yeah, that works really, really well. So there we are. So that is another way of using uh, variables tied up with these ideas of conditionals. If you wanted to be really, really, really fancy, you could actually elaborate on this a little bit more. You could uh, add this idea called AND and OR, which are ways that you can make more complex expressions to write in these statements. You don't probably have to think too much about this for the silver badge, but I'll just give you a, a free example here. Uh, I could say that if the A button is pressed AND, as well as that, the current number is currently greater than 1, so if the number, if the value of this is currently greater than one, then take one off it. And what difference would that make to things? Well, if the current number was five, then uh, five is greater than one, and I've pushed the button, so that would count down to four, and three, and two. Okay, so what if the number was, uh, was one though? What if current number was one? Well, one isn't greater than one. One is the same as one. So at that point, if I pushed button A, this isn't true, one is not greater than one. So these instructions wouldn't get run, and these instructions don't apply either, so nothing would happen. So what this actually would do is it would give me the ability to stop my number program from going below one. It would count down to one, and, uh, and it would do that, but it wouldn't ever go below it, so I couldn't have a situation where negative numbers would appear. I imagine I could do something similar down here as well to stop it going above the number 10 or something so people don't get too carried away with themselves 
with extra numbers. So that's an interesting extension that maybe you could uh, explore and consider if you're feeling ambitious and you want to make more complex programs.